Hello, sports fans and football fans out there. It's me, Sportsman Z. Bob Zolke, I got my Defenders hat on. The Defenders had a big win last week in week one of the XFL. As I said last week in my week one preview of the games, I will do this every week and we will preview every week's games with a recap of the games the prior week. And we will start right now by looking at last Saturday's games. The first game was the Vegas Vipers at the Arlington Renegades. I picked the Renegades to win, and they did barely beat the Vipers by the score of 22 to 20. Um, and it was a comeback uh, win for the Renegades. The Vipers seemed for most of the game like they were going to win the game. Uh, but the Renegades came back and won it, and it was a good game, too. Real good game. In fact, three of the four games last weekend were very good games. The next game we got is the Orlando Guardians were visiting the Houston Roughnecks. Now, this was the uh, lone bad game of the week. But I did pick the Renegade, Reneg, the uh, or not, not the. Uh, I did pick the Roughnecks. Sorry, I did pick the Roughnecks to win this game, and they did, convincingly, by the score of 33 to 12, over the Guardians. So that was that was kind of a runaway game there. But I got both Saturday games right. Now we move on to the Sunday games. You had the St. Louis Battlehawks going into San Antonio and taking on the Brahmas. Now, this was uh, perhaps the uh, um, one of, well, I mean, they were all very good games. Uh, but this might have been the best one of the bunch. Now, this was the game I got wrong. I had picked the Brahmas to win. And the Brahmas would have won. The final score was 18-15 St. Louis. The Brahmas would have won, except that they gave up a late touchdown to St. Louis. St. Louis went for the three-point conversion after the touchdown. So that's the furthest out. I don't know what it is, 10 yards out or something like that. And they got the conversion. And then, instead of kicking off, they opted to go for the fourth and 15 play to try to retain the ball. And they were able to do that and then scored again. And so they scored something like two, maybe two touchdowns. I'm not sure what that last score was. I didn't see the very end of the game. But, um, but they scored twice in like two minutes. So, and that's the kind of excitement that the XFL can give you. Um, that you can't do that in the NFL. You can't get a three-point conversion in the NFL. And you can't. Um, you can't opt to go for like a, a crazy fourth and 15 play to try to retain the ball after you have scored. Now, you can only do that in the XFL in the fourth quarter, I believe. But still, they have an allowance for it, and it happened. So that was the game I got wrong. I picked the Brahmas, and St. Louis came back in the last two minutes of the game and won it with two touchdowns or something like that. So, um, crazy. And then you got my D.C. Defenders, and they were victorious over the Sea Dragons by the score of 22-18. to 18. Much like a couple of the other games, it looked like the Defenders were going to lose. It looked like the Sea Dragons were in control the entire game. But really, <clears throat> they relinquished the lead late, and the Defenders held on to win the game by the score of 22-18. to 18. So I, if you were doing the math at home, I got three out of four in week one correct. So now we're going to move on to week two. Um, the first game this week is going to be on Thursday, the 23rd of February. And that's going to be the Battle Hawks against the Seattle Sea Dragons. Now both of these teams put up a very good showing in week one. Um, the Battle Hawks with that last ditch come from behind effort against the uh, Brahmas, and uh, 
the Seattle Sea Dragons in control most of the game against the D.C. Defenders, but losing it late. Uh, the Sea Dragons are at home in this one in Seattle. I'm going to take the Sea Dragons. Um, still don't have really a lot to go on to pick these games, but at least after having seen one game, I'm going to give the edge in that game at least to the Sea Dragons. The next game you got is uh, going to be on the uh, 25th, Saturday the 25th of February, and that's going to be the D.C. Defenders at the Vegas Vipers. And in this one, I'm going to go with the Defenders again. I mean, they, uh, they, they, they had a valiant comeback uh, last week against Seattle, and I think maybe they've learned quite a bit from that game because it uh, clearly was not an impressive victory. And the Vipers did lose in their opening week. So even though the Vipers are at home, I'm going to go with D.C. in that one. The next one you got is uh, the, the last two games are going to be on Sunday. And the first of those is San Antonio against the Orlando Guardians. Uh a guy I know, he texted me and said, um, <clears throat> he IM'd me and said he can't see anybody picking the Orlando Guardians until they prove something better than what they showed in week one. And I would tend to agree with him. So even though this game is in Orlando, I am 100% going with San Antonio, who probably should have beaten the Battle Hawks, except that they pulled off that crazy last minute come from behind uh, shenanigans to beat him. And then you got the Renegades against the Roughnecks. Now the Roughnecks were just superiorly impressive in their game against the uh, Guardians. We don't know if the Guardians are that bad or if Houston is that good, but the Renegades, most of the game... Uh, in week one, the Renegades looked like they were going to lose. And they uh, and really their defense came up with a lot of key plays. There was like three interceptions by their defense in the second half. Without those, the Renegades don't win. So I'm going to say that the Houston Roughnecks, despite the fact that their quarterback threw two interceptions, he also threw two touchdown passes. I'm going to take the Houston Roughnecks in that one. So, uh, what do you guys think about week one of the uh, XFL? I mean, the games were exciting. The players, you know, everybody says, well, the player quality is bad. Well, the player quality being bad really doesn't matter if the, um, if the rest of the league is like that. If you're playing with players who are at your level, it, it doesn't really, a lot of the times it doesn't show. Now, there were a lot of dropped passes there were a lot of overthrown receivers, so that did happen. But the level of play is relative across the board, so I don't think it matters that much. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your picks are for week two. Did you like week one? Did you think it was exciting? I did. Like I said, three of the four games were would have had you on your edge and on the edge of your seat and at least two of the three were comeback wins. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. But for right now, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.